presents The Raw Files Well hello again everybody, um, welcome to Ashford Daily Raw Files We're still from the beautiful island of Corfu on the Grand Workshop and uh, we're highly honoured to have the incredibly talented and entertaining Mr. Graham Monroe with us. Yay. Good morning, Graham. Hi, good morning, Greg. Good morning, Mary. Um, this sort of request to sit here nude at this hour of the day is um, really quite uncomfortable and I'm chafing a bit. <laughs> so Graham has now set the tone for the interview and he's not joking. <laughs> So, um, for the benefit of uh, people sort of outside of Australia, and that, so who's Graham Munro and what you're all about? Okay, well, I'm uh, a likeable guy. I'm a Libran. Uh, my lucky number is seven. <laughs> and uh, I'm a wedding and portrait photographer in Sydney. And we have a company called gmphotographics.com.au. And uh, we do weddings and portraits. Uh, my past life, I was a commercial photographer. I did a lot of advertising, editorial, uh, a lot of sport work and uh, direct client work and gradually um, it was actually David Oliver the uh, well-known sort of photo um, journalist type photographer from uh, Sydney who kept saying you should do weddings you should do weddings and I used to make the sign of the cross and throw holy water at him because I always thought that the wedding photographers were rather crap Um, and then I went over to David's place and realized how good his work was and he basically shot in the style that I'd like to shoot in which was you know, and at those days, I'm going back about, you know, a good 15 years or so, um, was just follow the day, because I used to do, I was doing a lot of travel work then, and I'd get sent away to, you know, photograph some leading chef in Bali for Bon Appetit magazine in the States or whatever, and the brief would be, okay, shoot this chef, there's a specific, some specific hero shots, shoot this food, but then shoot the culture, give us a great sense of place, so that's one of my main fascinations with weddings, and also with the portraits, is, is, um, is to go there and just shoot shoot the wedding as it unfolds, um, shoot you know the environment, all the little bits, all the little details that make up the day. And gradually over the last 15 years, I suppose our style of wedding photography has become a bit more um, sort of bride, beauty, fashion-y focus. So we're trying to work that angle a little bit more. And um, yeah, and, and life is good. So I'm happily married, got a couple of kids. I've been a mad Canon user since '84. I'm a Canon EOS master, the same as Yervant in Australia. We're the only two um, wedding and portrait guys in Australia with that gig. Um, and so your it's wife's great. A, the wife's a makeup artist. Yeah, I met my wife through work. She's a hair and makeup artist, and um, um, we we went on P and O the fun ship. Um, and it did live up to its name. We had fun. <laughs> it, it has another reputation as a begins with the F word, but I won't say that because. Um, I've got told this is a family interview. And, um, yeah, uh, we went away. So my wife's just actually got into photography, and she has been really hooking in on that over the last couple of years. So she's a hair and makeup artist, but she had done modelling in the past, and she'd worked with a lot of photographers, both in the commercial field and wedding fields. So she has a very good feel and, and, and look and eye and sense about photography. So it's quite amazing watching her transition to photography and how quickly she's able to do it. There's a few minor technical glitches. So she's another part of the business which we call portrait couture, which is um, uh, which is glamour photography. Yeah, so it's a bit like you know? our boudoir uh, that we have over <coughs> there. Uh, yeah, well, glamour did have a big run in Australia, and I think it did internationally, but then it sort of seemed to die a horrible screaming death. But um, like all things, you know, you, you do something well and you can make anything work. Yeah. And um, so that's good. And we're really trying to work that a bit to be able to drive her more business by giving her a lot more leads with the mothers and the daughters, you know, the, the, the mother of the bride yeah. and the bride or the bride and the bridesmaids. So we're starting to try and package it up. And I suppose that's a strategy that we've really tried to adopt with a lot of our clients is, you know, it's just that McDonald's strategy, like, you know, would you like fries with that? And yeah. you know how we can kind of keep value adding and add products on um, to our clients because yeah. you know we get good clients 
and they're happy they're happy with what they do and you just try and think well you know how can we continue the love yeah and that, that's what it's all about is is you know completely satisfying your client and giving them something new and fresh that they can choose and select from but also uh, enriching your portfolio of products and services isn't it definitely yeah yeah i mean and no, and no matter how advanced everything gets and you know and, you know whether they are going to bring out a camera that can immediately facebook i think that's going to be you know version five of the Mark, you know, the 5D Mark V, you know, we'll have a Facebook button. <laughs> Shit, anything's possible. <laughs> but no matter how advanced it, it, it gets and is happening as we speak, you can just never be going back to good old fashion sales and marketing strategies and look after your client, have, you know, treat them with respect, treat them with a bit of dignity. Um, you know, and, and you can you can really do well. You, you know, you don't have to be the most cutting edge person. You don't have to have the latest Photoshop technique. You don't have to have the latest camera, etc. But you just need to be good at your craft, and you just need to, you know, have good business skills and really look after your clients. And they will keep coming back, and they will keep referring you. Yeah, and that, uh, what's great about Grant <coughs> is that um, he actually has a really great product um, that teaches photographers about putting those foundations in place to make sure that you're um, setting the groundwork to deal with your clients properly in the right way. Oh okay. cool, oh, thanks for mentioning that Mary, yeah we've got like a, a, D, a DVD that we just brought to, to Greece because I didn't want to release it in Australia and I probably won't sell it in Australia because I don't want my co competitors to get it. It's mm -hmm. just basically our business secrets, it's just um, got all our wedding and portrait templates, uh, everything that we give to the client because we have a real big validation process with our client. One of the girls today, uh, one of the students today, sort of was talking about portraits, and and um, she was, you know, wondering how to improve um, the sales of her portraits. And I said, well, you know, are you getting the clients in and validating them before you shoot? And we always do that. We always do that. I'd say ninety five percent of the time we do that. Sometimes it's not possible because somebody can, you know, send an email from overseas, mm -hmm. and the next thing they're flying, and you're shooting them the next day, type things. But um, we send out a lot of information by email, um, but we always um, are encouraging uh, our portrait clients and our wedding clients to come in and go through a whole validation process where we say, look, this is what we do, this is how we do it, mm -hmm. this is what we sell, this is what it costs, tell us about your house. But prior to that, it's, it's tell us about your kids, tell us about your family, get them talking, and mums you know, love to talk about their kids and what the personality of their kids and how do you see little Johnny being photographed and da 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 and the interaction and it's really it's, important it's fantastic well, isn't it? yeah because people that they need to know that you care as well and that's a great way of showing that you do and um, getting into their psyche as well isn't it yeah and sometimes like if you don't care then you just got to fake it <laughs> um, and <laughs> I kind of mean that as a joke but it's also I mean sometimes you know photographers have off days and sometimes you get up and you think, oh, I'm just really not up to this today. But it's like, you know, when you answer that phone, smile. Yeah. And the next thing, you, you're actually retraining yourself to be in a, in a good mood, in a positive mood. I would much prefer to go to work and have fun and make money that way. Otherwise, or, 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 you know, than go to work and be in pain. It's like, you know, life's too short. It's and, and, you know, you've got to ask yourself why would you do it if, if you're not having a great time. And the, and the more fun you're having, it comes across with your clients. And I think I've always thought that photography is like this transference of energy. So the more the more energetic you are, and the more that you effort you put in, well, you're generally always going to get a better shot because you're trying hard. Mm -hmm. And then and you're feeling a lot better, and um, the day goes a lot quicker. And the amount of times, you know, at weddings when people come and go, oh, that was, you know, you're such a great photographer. And I go, well, how would you know you haven't seen any photos yet? <laughs> <laughs> and they go, but I can tell the way you work. Yeah. yeah. And it comes across and people recognise that. And it's, you know, when I hear these stories of, oh, our photographer is outside doing this and that, or they just, you know, you sort of think, well, that photographer needs to have a break. Yeah. They need... They need to stop shooting for a bit. They need to have a holiday. Yeah. You know, and people go, oh, I can't. And I go, like, you know, it's... It's so much better for your business and and your soul. And I'm not all being hippie-ish and, you know, I never smoke marijuana. <laughs> I, I actually did once, but I didn't inhale. But um, it, it's more based on the thing that, you know, if you're having fun and people like to be about around you, 
you know, you can really prosper that way. Yeah. But it, it's, it's hard work. Yeah. Well, pe- I generally find that people want to go along for the ride with you if you're yeah. having such a great time. They want to be part of that. Mm. And, and Greg and I, thankfully, have done a shoot with you this week, over this last week, and it's been amazing. You know, it's just the energy and the creativity that comes out, Graham. It's amazing. Oh, it's, it's a little bit of a challenge doing those, uh, <laughs> those, <laughs> those, sweating those off, work, well. workshops because you're sort of wandering down the road and I'm, you know, I'd love to shoot a wedding in old Corfu town. It's fantastic. But then to sort of, you know, have you... Because my initial invitation was, hey, Graham, I'm doing this, um, like, reunion in Corfu. Um, do you want to come over for a week and um, maybe just do a, you know, little presentation for, um, like, you know, two hours one day? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no worries, Jervin. That'd be great. Um, I mean, I love you, and He's just... He's always... He's such a, a generous soul. And he's a very, very intelligent person. Um, I mean, he got up the other day and just cold talked for two hours, didn't refer to any notes, showed a couple of little videos, but just, you know, stayed on track, was humorous, really delivered it. He's a great ambassador for professional wedding photography. He you is. Know, he really is. And, and he's a bloody good photographer. Yeah. But so then the itinerary came at me and it was sort of like, okay, well, the first day is to do a talk on um, your history and then we... And then we go off and um, with seven models and with the classes divided up and we go shooting. And then the second day is you do a presentation on what inspires you and then we go off and we do shooting. And then the third day is going to be uh, retouching and then the fourth day is going to be um, marketing and then we want you to do a marketing you know, presentation and uh, work some of your files and then judge all the images as well. And it's like, fuck, you know, like, <laughs> can, I, can, I get, can I get any shut eye in there? Can I get to have a little, um, a little sleepy poo, you know? <laughs> but uh, it's been fun. It's really been a jam-packed week, and I think, you know, incredible value. I yeah. mean, I asked one of the participants, they said it was like $1,500, and I thought, man, this is, you know, if you paid that for a day session, yeah. it would have been worth it. But So it was actually, a bit, I got off track there, sorry about that. It, okay. I found it a, a little bit challenging to, because um, I've done a lot of photography, but I haven't done a lot of photography, you know, where I've had a group of photographers with me. You know, we we'll often um, we always shoot weddings and our portraits with two shooters. Generally, the port the the portrait is more somebody to to style and direct and keep an eye on things, um, and not shoot because we find if we've got two shooters with kids, the kids start to look away at the other photographer, whereas the adults you can usually train them which way to look. Yeah. Um, but um, with the weddings, we do two photographers, sort of a main shooter and the second shooter to do the opposite of what the first shooter is doing, or back the first shooter up at a different angle and generally you know if I'm shooting with a long lens they're shooting with a tight lens or that kind of thing mm-hmm. um, yeah so it's it's so and, and sometimes we have people who want to um, join our crew and we'll get them to come along as a third for a bit just to try them out and maybe assist and I actually think a, a superb way of shooting a wedding is three yeah. first shooter and they have an assistant and that assistant you know Drives, gets the ladder, holds the bounce, keeps an eye on things, keeps a check on what's being shot, mm-hmm. and an overall would probably be more like the possibly even a director. Mm-hmm. That would be great. Yeah, I mean, Greg and I actually shoot together at weddings as well, and um, that's we, we primarily do do that. And one of us is obviously keeping an, a close eye on timelines as well because yep. they're obviously driven by the venue. Uh, largely, so all the the wedding planner. Yep. So, While we're just talking about assignments and that, have you ever had one memorable one, either a funny one or one that's been particularly challenging, or one you think, oh, I'm never going to forget that? <laughs> um, yeah, I remember uh, one week we just had this run of um, jobs that kind of all went to shit, and um, it was. I think it was just our turn to cop it. Um, there was one job in particular, you know, the brief, it was when I was a commercial photographer and the brief was, was shooting a dive watch. And my whole, I mean, I'm, my sort of commercial work is not still life orientated. So if you wanted something, you know, crystal sharp and crystal clean, you can go and get a still life guy. But, you know, if, you know, so the brief was that there would be, you know, fun and movement with this watch punching out of the water and all of that. And then they would, and somebody else is doing the product shot. And so I delivered that shot and the guy said, but the watch is slightly blurry. And I went, yeah, but you sort of wanted movement and you wanted a dynamic and you wanted punching out of the water with this new watch and, mm. you know, and I took notes at the brief and I've delivered. What's the problem? Mm-hmm. 
oh no, we want it a lot more sharper, a lot more clean, a lot more static, a lot more this, a lot more that. We went and shot it again, we didn't nail it, presented it to the client, and then we presented it again, and the, the, the second time I got sort of rejected on it, I, you know, my, my assistant and I were sitting there scratching, and my assistant was going, we always get it. And I said, yeah, but we can never think that. Yeah. We can never have that confidence, because I think always, as soon as you get too confident, it's no good. I mean, it's not like we always run scared, but you're just sort of on the adrenaline and going for it. And, I, you know, I just realised that the client was very unpleasant. Mm-hmm. And we did nail it. Mm-hmm. And it was as I presented it each time. I, the third time I presented it, I was like, you know, we have really nailed it. It's fantastic. And I really talked it up before he even saw it. <laughs> By the time I presented it to him, he was in love with it. So it was a bit of smoke and mirrors, that one. Um, you know, I've had some... Um, Great jobs. We did this one job with Garuda where they, um, Garuda Airlines, they used to do these big um, uh, foot cone and building in Sydney, had the Garuda Airlines account, and um, they used to uh, specifically do ads for, um, you know, all, all the different, um, um, not not ethnic groups, but all, you know, like they do it like these ads for the Germans, and, the, you know, there's this one sector of the Germans who are, They'll travel anywhere, they're very adventurous, they'll do anything. And then there's another section of the Germans who just want to stay in five-star hotels. So they've got the whole world broken down to cater for the different markets. So we went to <coughs> Medang, where they do the running of the bulls. And um, so they have these two bulls, they're like tethered together and they have a, a young boy like stand on kind of basically a stick that runs between the two bulls and have reins and then race these bulls. And what they sometimes do is put a little bit of chili on the testicles of one of the bulls to make them run a bit quicker. <laughs> so we were doing this shoot and, you know, it was one of those things where I kind of was in this stage of advertising. I just always used to shoot, like to shoot available like 35 mil and not be clustered with gear, but the client, I was in, under a bit of a pressure, like, you know, we wanted a big trout, it was film days, you know, so it was like 120, we set bow cars up and the next thing the bulls charged in, ripped the lights up, run down the road with <laughs> the bow cars split in half, you know, and the, the lights stuck on one and I don't know if that bull had testicles, they had the chili on its testicles, but it was running pretty fast. And <laughs> so we then sort of put that gear to the side and a few, you know, they were, they were just running amok. And it was all a setup. It was, it was always funny with advertising because they'd, they'd want you to shoot an event in April to promote it for October, but it actually occurred the previous October. And you go, well, why don't you guys just get your act together? Why don't we go and shoot the real thing? Yeah. Which I often find is so much easier than setting it up for an advertising mm-hmm. shoot. Um, but that was great. We, we, you know, we ended up doing these pan shots like a 30th of a second with these bulls charging through and it got heaps of press. And, um, and it was the first time that Ad News, the leading advertising paper in Australia, were running big colour shots on the front cover. And they, and they were sending the journalists out to you know, Indonesia with us to cover it. And um, so then all these people wrote in complaining about the cruelty to animal. And you know, one of the, the, the head guys who wrote in was the, the, this famous copywriter in Australia at the time who um, you know, said how cruel we were to animals putting chili on their testicles. Not that we actually came up with that concept. Um, <laughs> um, although some of the nightclubs I've been to probably would, you know... Um, you know, run on that stuff, but uh, that's another story. <laughs> that's another interview. But um, apparently, well, this guy, he, he had, um, he wrote and complained of the cruelty to animals, and then my art director wrote back saying, mate, you can talk, you know, you've got the meat and livestock campaign. You know, we're only, you know, whacking a little bit of chilli on the testes. You're actually, like, killing and eating them. So it was this, we used to get some fantastic, have some fantastic, sometimes the roll on and the PR that you could generate from, from shots afterwards. Yeah. And I think that's something that photographers don't do enough of is mm. good general PR, like, you know, promote your local profession. Get to know <coughs> get to know the people who work in your local newspaper. Because if you're a local photographer, you know, you're shooting portraits for the local people. So the more exposure you can have that's not paid advertising, the better. Yeah. And a great way for doing that is, you know, is... Um, public relations and you, you know you can do a lot of it yourself just take these journalists to lunch um, and they'll look after you and just treat them well and you know and feed them stuff regularly they won't run it all the time you'll get knocked back a lot 
Uh, so, in terms of your real weddings, then, do you actually yep. submit every single one to uh, some of the national magazines in Australia? Um, yeah, and I was surprised with this group. A lot of the people from you know, all from around the world, um, this very international group, um, won't seem to be submitting their magazines to you know the, the, the their local wedding. Weren't, sorry, weren't submitting their weddings to the local wedding magazines. Yeah. And yeah, we have a very active strategy to do that. Again, it's all hard work, but. They'll run your shots. Um, it's just great exposure. And we find, um, you know, in Australia, in, in Sydney in particular, you know, the mags are all about... It's like all weddings, you know. It's the theming of the wedding. It's the colour palette. Um, it's the styling of the wedding. It's all of that. It's basically, it's all about the reception kind of thing. That's yeah. what the... You know, and some mags are really focused on that. Some of the other mags would, you know, like, um, show a little bit more of the flowers at the church. But it's all about... It's not necessarily, you know, if you get a great shot of the bride getting ready at home, yes, they're going to run that. So they'll, they'll run a good, competent coverage of the day, but it's, you've got to look at the magazines that you want to get published in and submit those relevant images. And then we have worked out which are our favourite mags and we send weddings to them in priority. But we don't submit all weddings because no. some of them aren't up to it. No. Um, and some weddings... They just don't have the styling, and we just know they're going to knock them back. Yeah. What can um, you do? We always get permission off the brides too, yeah. and that's a bit annoying because we've had a few where the brides have said yes, but then when they goes to the mag, they go, "I don't want to be in that mag," and they go, oh, "Okay." So what we do now is we'll check with the bride before we submit it because what happens is you submit it to the mag. You know, the mag might have two hundred weddings submitted. They'll go and pick out their faves, and some of the mags are, are national, mm -hmm. so they'll you know want a few from Sydney, a few from Queensland, a few from Victoria. And if they lay the mag out, and then our bride says, "No, I don't want to be in your mag," so yeah, it's, it's yeah. embarrassing for you. Yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah, it's slightly embarrassing, but I've moved forward. Um, <laughs> but but it, it's just about really good communication. Yeah, yeah. Um, just at the moment, the the economy in Australia is pretty good, isn't it? Compared to it America is, I really Europe. hope it stays yeah. that way. Um, have you got any sort of advice for photographers in the States and Europe who are up against it at the moment with you know, child, everybody wanting a bar? <coughs> and, um, is there any way that they can protect themselves better to bring more business in? Um, okay, well, um, I'll try and wing this answer, but um, you know, we have been quite lucky. We did have a, a minor GFC hit that I think in in Australia, rather than having a recession, we had a recession led by the press, and it did affect quite a few weddings where people, you know, people did get laid off. Mm -hmm. um, and so we did have, I think we had about 10 weddings that didn't go ahead that year. And um, maybe once or twice a year, you know, the people, they just fall out of love and the wedding falls off. There was two where the dad got sacked, so they decided to postpone the wedding. Um, and there was um, a couple where they still went ahead, but they just said, look, we just can't afford you. Um, and my contract is when they've paid the deposit, it's non-refundable. I will change it for the days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and if the people are really nice, I will give them a credit to a portrait shoot because I you know, want to keep the love happening, keep them as clients. Um, so we didn't really get hit by it. So I'm probably not you know, the best one. But look, I think it's, it's just so important... Um, in good times and in bad times is to um, you know really try and maintain a positivity which is bloody hard to do when you're getting hit from all over the side really have your studio looking well uh, when the clients are arriving treat them that extra bit special I mean the, the trouble is when photographers um, start competing with each other they're, 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 they're like a pack of dogs all biting and you don't kind of want to be in that Bun fight, and the only person who's going to benefit is the bride and groom because the photographers go into this silly sort of undercutting war. Uh, I think is you know it, it's important to still stand in your strength, um, and a lot of people are using the recession. I mean, one of the Greek girls last night she said, "Look, in Greece, it's very very challenging," um, and she said even the rich people are now saying, "Don't you know what the economy is like?" and they're using that for bargaining power, and that's why the rich are rich. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's, you know it's to maintain your quality. Uh, you know if you can redo your your studio and not an expensive makeover, that's a really good mental thing mm -hmm. to spruce things up and go. Well, this is fantastic. It's looking great. And that doesn't um, have to cost a lot. Does it? No, it doesn't. Be a bit savvy about yeah, how you dress maybe, it. And, yeah. Maybe you've got a painter. You can't hire the painter. Like you've mm -hmm. got to do all do do it all yourself. Yeah. Um, 
you know, I think just try and value add to your packages. Um, maybe you might have to modify your prices a touch. I don't know. It's it's uh, or instead of discounting, you know, just maybe throw some other products in. I mean, I you know we have a bit of a thing where we try and do a little bit of a you know a book early, so we we, we try and encourage people to book at their first appointment, uh, and we will re- we reward them. Yeah. Um, so to maybe have some little strategies like that where you, you know, you know well, what's going to be different to you and your competitor? And in good times and bad, you've always got your competitors. And sometimes having really good competitors actually really keeps you, you on your toes because you just yeah. keep trying a bit better. But when times are tough, all the photographers start competing stupidly with each other. I mean, if people are still going to go ahead with their marriage, they're still going to do it. They've saved the money. They're committed to it. They'll cut cuss elsewhere, but mm. they're still going to go ahead with it. Um, I think it's a rocky road, isn't it? Once you start discounting, yeah. you can become known for discounting. <coughs> it's very difficult to climb back up that hill to the level that you're at before. Yeah, yeah. And I have had a, I definitely, you know, I'm not going to lie. Um, you, you know, I've had a, the, the, uh, there's a couple of times with some celebrity weddings where I've really gone hard to get them. Um, and I have given them an extremely good deal. But it's a two way street. They need to sign off and. Um, cover my part of the deal as well um, but when I have had a couple of tough clients and you know maybe I've just even played with a little bit where you know I've had a, a client that's a bit of a bargainer and I might have given in here but but taken back there because um, negotiating is a, is a two way street I mean I had a bride recently and I said well look if you pay all the money up front now I'll give you a couple extra pages mm-hmm. and, an, and, and an extra hours coverage so I might have given away four hundred dollars, but she paid the full package a year and a half in advance. So yeah. it was a way of securing the thing. It was a way of making her happy mm-hmm. um, and securing that booking yeah. and just really improving my cash flow. You know, with that with that quick payment and. And I think you've hit the nail on the head there, Graham, as well, is that the client has to be in the position to be able to commit as well. Yeah. You know, and, and quite often there are a number of clients that will just test the waters. They're just ringing around every photographer into yeah. the sun. And it is just budget-driven. And, you know, that's not a really great, healthy place to be in because they're not actually thinking about the value of the investment they're making and the creativity of the photographer either, either. Yeah, yeah, very true. We, we've got a strategy at the moment because we do change and we have all our, pro- well, we have all our start off prices on our website. And I know for a fact that has worked against us a little bit because it would have frightened away some people who would have come in and met with us and loved us and booked and become great clients. But it also got rid of so many tire kickers. So it was sort of, you know, with a lot of things you do, there's definitely a compromise and a trade-off, and you've got to work out what works for you and what is better for you. Um, you know, I've had people come in, so we're getting less inquiries. Our booking rates improved a lot more because we've sort of nearly validated the inquiries. Um, and we've had people who said, look, I really appreciated all your prices were up there. You're, we've seen a few photographers, and you're actually similar to X, Y, and Z. Um, but we... Actually, you know, they booked us because they just thought we were really straight up and the other people were a little bit, you know, but when they figured it out, we were actually the same price or a little bit cheaper than or a little bit more expensive than, but we got, we got rewarded for being upfront and being honest about it. So, so that, that's been good. Yeah. Um, I think as well, you know, people can tell, <coughs> you know, when they have their initial consultation with the photographer, if that personal relationship's going to work. And mm. with yourself, the, they know that they're going to get amazing imagery, but also it's going to be fun on the day. It's going to be a great shoot. Um, thanks very much for the compliment, Mary. I think you're going to ask me a difficult question now. Um, I will actually... I'm mainly the meet and greeter at the studio with the wedding clients. And my studio manager, I have this fantastic studio manager, Lauren Bootland. She's just the best thing that's ever happened to my business. Um, she will generally run, uh, we, we're kind of like a tag team. She'll, she's an early starter and prefers to start early, and I, I'm fine with that. I mean, I'm, I'm fine to work with, you know, with my staff um, and, you know, and work with what makes them work best. And she has a preference to start early, finish early. So I'll do most of the appointments of an evening. Um, you know, I know most of the locations have done all the photography, but I'm, um, I've kind of been de the business, and it's all about GM Photographics, the brand, rather than Graham. So 
Um, so when the people come in, we'll chat it all through, and I say, oh yes, I am available for your day, but to have, I only do a select few weddings, and to have me is an additional $1,000. Mm -hmm. Now Bambi said I should put up another 2000 um, so I'm starting to pick and choose the weddings a bit because I don't want to be doing a wedding Friday, Saturday and Sunday. It's, it's just too physically demanding and, and, um, and I prefer, I find I'm a much better photographer if I'm not shooting as much. Yeah. Um, you know, and I've got a young wife that I've got to chase around and I've got some young kids that <laughs> chase me around. So, um, so um, that's working well. But yeah, it, it is good and I have had... <clears throat> and it was a, at first it was a challenge, but it's like all things, it's, a ch it's only a challenge in your head. Mm -hmm. You know, once you put it out there with confidence, the clients are like, fine, okay. Um, and, and the way I sell my other photographers, I go, look, you know, I've got Simon Gorgeous, he's a fantastic photographer. He's better than me. And I've had clients say, well, why would I waste that extra money buying you? And I said, well, exactly. Mm -hmm. Save that extra money and get me and get extra pages in your album. So it's having a good rapport. Um, but, and sometimes it's worked well because... And the people really do like it. They go, well, Graham, we really want you as our photographer. And I go, okay, fine. And, you know, and they're invoiced accordingly. So, but I've had a lot of people who we haven't done their wedding. And um, when they've picked up the album and they, they're leaving, they're thanking, me, they're thanking me and saying it was a fantastic wedding. You did such a great job, et cetera, and so forth, which is what you expect. Mm -hmm. And when you don't have those compliments, you know you haven't done your job properly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not being egotistical. It's basically, you know... I say to people, the only problem I want you to have with your photography is too many good shots to choose from. Yeah. And we do hear that and you think, great, we're on target here. Yeah. But when these people are leaving and thanking me, I say, oh, well, that's great, but I wasn't your photographer, Simon was. And they go, yeah, but it was like you were there. So, you know, for all those people who are um, maybe got some other, sh you know, shooters uh, working with them, you've really got to... You've really got to train them very well and you've got to really keep an eye on them and because the challenge is that your style can change. Um, so you have to keep an eye on that and you, you, know, you, really, you can't just you know, build this business up and step to the side and let everybody else run it. You've really got to keep an eye on everything. I think you've um, constantly got to be re-educating yourself as well. Huh? Definitely. To stay yeah. ahead of the game. Yeah. I was just going to ask you know, for um, people that are sort of, should we say, at the middle end of the market, um, what would be the best way of a photographer's sort of master of style that's going to appeal to high-end clients? <coughs> oh, okay, I think um, the great way to master a style is to shoot and shoot a lot. And, and even if you haven't done that many weddings, because uh, a couple came up to me and said, oh, look, we haven't done that many weddings. How will we get better at it, this and that? And I said, well, you know, just get some friends. You got any friends who are married? They said, oh, not many of our friends are married. You know, I said, well... You know, get get your friends who are couples, um, get them to put on rings that, that they look like they're married, and just go off and do a shoot with them, and treat it like it's a wedding. And I said, if you're going to do one of that, you know, if you if you do a couple of those every week, you're going to become a very good photographer very quickly, because you're constantly, you know, it's maybe a different headspace because you're not under the pressure. But you know, when you think about it, if you just if you're like half smart and not living under a rock, um, you know go and get some of your past wedding clients that you've already got a good relationship with mm. that already have a suit, that already have a wedding dress get them to dress up again maybe you're going to shout the hair and makeup or maybe they will and you're going to give them a few free shots yeah. and there's just so many ways that you can mm. get more shots happening and, and, and work to develop your style. I think it's um, very important to go to a lot of these workshops. You can of course you know, oversaturate yourself with workshops but I think it's a matter of going to these workshops and applying what you've learned like I'm going to go back I've probably written about 20 or 30 pages of notes mm -hmm. from being at this workshop and listening t yeah. to the other photographers talk and some of the things the students have said to me etc and I'll then go home and I'll prioritise that note and I'll probably get it down into my top 10 things to do and that's what I'll do first and then I'll gradually go through the rest but um I think it's great workshops actually because it's a real <coughs> melting pot of you know everybody may be at different levels or they may be at the same level but you all should come away thinking I've learned something I, definitely there's something I can take away even if it's one or two things that you can then really start to think about applying into your own business but yep. plus also it's a massive networking exercise yep. isn't it photographers talking to other photographers I know in the past photographers always seem to be a bit 
I really want to talk to another photographer. You know, he might nick my style or nick my ideas, but I think like, um, on the sort of professional circuit, photographers will talk to each other and sort of share ideas and formulate ideas together. Yeah, I, look, I, I, I came from a commercial background and the, the commercial advertising guys, I mean, you know, they're like savage to each other in the essence of, you know, it's like, oh, there's a main competitor, watch him, watch him. And when you actually start working together with your fellow colleagues, you you learn tenfold, um, and it's great for your, your your business. And that was one of the main things that I, th- I thought was just incredible about when I got involved in the RPP in Australia. The wedding guys were so open-handed, and even though you might be competing with a few of them, they just were really, you know, I'd say, you know, you say, oh, look, I've got this problem with this client about this. Oh, this is how you you handle that. And a lot of times, I always sort of um, sort of say well if you walk into a conversation and there's five of you in this conversation and you give out one bit of information and everybody else does you come away you know four times more because they all gave you stuff so you've got to give to receive and um you know if you've got big secrets or big jobs you're pitching on then you know you keep that to yourself Mm -hmm. you don't give away everything that you know it if you're concerned that you know you're pitching for something or you've really got this great idea, then you know of course you need to keep some things to yourself. And I find when I'm out of town, I probably speak a lot more freer um, with my colleagues interstate because they're not my direct competitors. So sometimes it's a matter of going interstate to some of the um, awards in other states to really talk about, hey, look, I, you know, I'm in such and such, and this is how I'm doing pre-weddings, and this is how I do this, and how does that work for you, and what about this, and what about that? Um, yesterday I was talking to Bambi Cantrell, and I was, you know, I've been toying with the idea of having a few, um, doing a few workshops in Sydney, but smaller ones. I thought I'd just start off small, rather than get a big cinema and try and do a massive marketing thing and get in 200 people at X amount ahead and making X amount ahead, and then you, you know, and my studio manager said, "Well, why would we do that when we can do five portraits? It's going to be a lot easier. Like, what do we want to do here?" Yeah. Um, and I do like um, meeting other photographers, and I'm honoured that I'm asked to talk um, and present my work. And I think it, it it really is a great learning curve for you. Um, so we're going to just start off with these small workshops. But talking to Bambi, she, I've never really been a a big fan personally of, of going along when everyone else is shooting but she said you know, so many of the people they just want to shoot mm-hmm. whereas I actually want to sit there and get you to put up a shot and tell me how you did it yeah. you know and tell me the problems about the shoot etc and so forth so for me it was opening my mind going okay well I'm, I'm going to incorporate that we're going to go out and do some more live shooting and and then I'm thinking well I'm going to become a better photographer if I can pose models and articulate why I've posed them that way and say to people to shoot it this way and that way, in being a, a good teacher, I'm going to become a better photographer. Yeah. So, I and I think a lot of times you've got to go to these um, workshops with an open mind. You've got to walk in there and go, oh, this speaker's full of shit. I mean, <laughs> you should have not come. Yeah. And if you really, if you had a th- talk that just thinks a waste of time, then you should leave. Yeah. But, you know, you, you will always benefit and I've been to a few talks where I've thought oh you know I should get a life this you know I'm not really enjoying this speaker much but I've found because I've taken the day off work I mean I am at bloody work anyway I'm still in another photography cinema I think about my business a lot more laterally so sometimes somebody can be chatting and I'm listening but I'm thinking oh what a great idea I'm going to take that idea I'm going to modify it and I'm going to do that and I think a lot of photographers make a crucial mistake and I was hoping to do a business chat this afternoon Mm -hmm. um, with Yerva and the crew Um, they don't look at their business as an outsider Mm -hmm. they don't look at their business and go I'm a customer would I book me? I'm going to stand outside my premises are my premises attractive? are they inviting? would I like to walk into this place? Whether you're walking from home, uh, you know, a, a, a shop front, up a flight of stairs, whatever, like, really look at your place. Don't go to, f- don't stand at the front of work. And go, I've got to go to work. I've got to answer my emails. But like, really look at your business. I'm and your project. Yeah, and yeah. and you know, there's a lot of male photographers there, and there's a lot of female photographers. But the bride is the one who. I'd say 95 percent of my business comes from the bride. The guy might call me, make the appointment. And when I ask him details about the day, he just knows nothing because the wife, the, the wife to be said, "You do the cars and do." The... 
I want this car, or you can do the cars, but let me know, don't book anything without my approval, um, and book an appointment with these photographers. Um, so, our, and our portraits are driven by mum's booking a portrait plan. She might encourage the husband to, to book us, but um, so you need to think um, with a female perspective. And you know, a lot of alpha males have struggled with that, so you need to involve women in that decision process and you need to listen to them. Yeah. I thought it was really good yesterday with <coughs> Annie. Um, who was, you know, talking about her pink marketing concept. And, you know, we've, we've all heard that several times with, with Annie because we've been on various workshops and seminars with her. But it's just every time there's something new to absorb there. But it is Definitely. very much directed to the woman and, you know, being very cute in the way that you're actually attracting uh, the bride to you and what her emotional connection is to all of that. Yeah. You know? I had, I've heard Annie speak several times and I was sitting there yesterday thinking, yeah, I've heard this. And I'm thinking, they're thinking, God, she's right. Mm. You know, it's, it's like, you know, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. I mean, you know, that, that, that I went and saw the guy who wrote that book. I can't remember his name. He's printed nearly as many copies as they've printed the Bible. He's actually got these um, uh, tree plantations that he brought. He's yeah. a very wealthy man. He's, a, you know, a great, great speaker. But he was, like, he was a... Um, uh, you know, marriage counsellor, oh. and you go to like one of his talks, and he says something that's relevant to women, and all the women go, "Yep," and the guys are sitting there perplexed. And when he says something <laughs> that's relevant for men, men go, "Yep," and all the women go, "What?" And they just, you know, the male does not get the female, and the female does get, get the male. And however, if you know, if you as a male want to book more brides, you need to listen to that woman. You need to understand her and. It's true. I mean, she can make that man spend a lot of money. If she wants you, she will have you. And, you know, if, if, if you're a real wantable client, just coming back to some of the earlier questions, you know, if you can really position yourself, they go, oh, I want this person. They will pay extra for you, you know. And um, coming back to the thing about, you know, marketing and trying to get better clients, like if your marketing and your ads are all saying $2 clients, then that's what you get. But, you know, if you start advertising and looking that you want you know the hundred dollar clients then then you'll get them but it, it doesn't happen overnight you've no. got to consistently work at it yeah. um but even if you look like you should have the hundred dollar client and you were getting a lot more fifty dollar weddings you're still going to be a lot better than those two dollar ones mm -hmm. um i mean i do sometimes wish that i was doing a couple of real budget weddings you know, out in the western suburbs of Sydney's, you know, where everyone got pissed and there were fights. Because, <laughs> you know, you probably get some great, you know, <laughs> photos for the awards. Um, Press awards. But, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so photographically it would be a lot more interesting. You'd have a lot, a lot of great sort of horror wedding stories to tell, but they just don't pay. No, they don't. And yeah, that, that's that you've got to be really... You have to go through that thought process don't you if, uh, is this going to work for me and you have to set your pricing level to make sure that you, you're covering all of your yeah. there's so many photographers these days that don't oh I know I, I, I look a lot of photographers I, I'd encourage you to go to photography seminars but I would totally encourage you to go and do um, David Beckstead said it yesterday and I've said it a lot of times if you know, if you can't handle conflict with your clients, do a conflict resolution course. Um, if you don't know much about small business, do a small business course. A lot of photographers, they're you know, they're little left brainers. They love photos. They love art. I oh, just want to be a photographer. Um, <laughs> you know, but like you're in business, and when you're in business, and when you're a professional photographer, you're in business to make a profit. That is why you're in business. You're not in business for the love of photography. You know, that's a photographer. But if you want to be a professional photographer, you need to get your business skills. So you can go to a lot of workshops where a lot of photographers can give you a lot of information. You can buy my DVD and get way ahead of the pack. I swear to God, it's so worth it. <laughs> um, but you know, you need to go and do business training. Yeah. You really do. And yeah. you know, I sort of, I've got this great bookkeeper now, and he nails me. You know, he sits down and we start, and you know, when I let him do his thing. He thrives on figures and analysing and say, well, we should shape, reshape the packages like this and that. And, you know, we could make an extra, you know, 50000 a year doing this. I'm like going, wow. <laughs> you know, but, I mean, I'm actually, I'm tired of working so hard 
and at the end of it not having the just rewards for it because I don't have an expensive lifestyle. Um, you, you know, you should be, if you work hard, you know, you need to look after your money. I mean, it's it's so important. It's the money that you make to, you know, invest into new gear and, and move forward and all of that. So, it, yeah, it's just, you've just got to get out more. And you've just, and I think, I see it so many times with photographers. I mean, I really love that joke, um, how many photographers did it take a, to change a light bulb? 59. One does it and the other 58 go, oh, I could have done that. <laughs> and, and I think that's a big problem with a lot of photographers. Mm. A lot of photographers are sitting in that group of 58 going, oh, I could have done that. How come you got the job? Yeah. It's like, get a life. You know, mm. like, it's the person who's doing it will get ahead. Mm-hmm. And the person who's really going out there, and I mean, you look at like a guy like myself or like Yervan, you, you know, you have a lot of knocks, but the thing is you, you learn and you get back up and you keep going. But I mean, if you just stop and... Go, oh, this is too hard. Well, uh, of course, you know, the, the yeah. grass will grow over you and you'll die. So, yeah. and that's why I think the importance of these workshops, you know, it, it's key to your own business development, but also your own personal development. To Definitely. Keep giving you, injecting that confidence and motivation as well. And also to see, you know, if you're looking to break into the international wedding market, for instance, which Greg and I do want to do more of. This, for us, is a good way of actually seeing what's happening on other continents as well. Yep, yep. Well, it's networking as well. We've spoken that <coughs> is sort of so important. And, and part of that I was going to come round to is um, blogs and Facebook. What's your yep. take on blogs and Facebook? Okay, um, well, everything takes time. Um, and I really love the, the aspect of uh, when digital first started, everyone went, oh, it's digital, it's, you know, it's free. You, know, you don't have to buy film anymore. And uh, I've never spent so much money on, on cameras and computers and staff. And Facebook, you either do it for it yourself yeah. or, you know, you, you know, you have one of your staff as sort of your social media person. And it's time and time is money. But Facebook is incredible. I mean, you know, like just even the build up to this Corfu workshop with Annie and Yervan, they're, they're Facebook fans. Okay. Um, I'm not so good at it but one of my staff is, so I'm actually trying to get her to do a lot more of it. Um, and and, and um, we've actually like got a couple of wedding stalkers, some of our brides, <laughs> that are always responding to our posts. They love us. Yeah. And you think, how can I utilise that? If I've got a bride who loves me, how can I make that work better for me? I can encourage her to write to forums and say what a great experience she's having with knowing us and we haven't even shut the friggin wedding yet <laughs> so man it's like you know we're under a lot of pressure here to deliver on the day yeah. um, but brides that we've done before is keep in touch with them get good testimonials off them encourage them to give you those testimonials um, some people are a bit slack at writing you might want to write the testimonial for them and get them to approve that testimonial. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and they'll come back, oh, I didn't say it like that. Because if you write something they don't like, they'll immediately respond to it. Um, there's just ways that you can make it work. Uh, we have a blog, but again, that um, takes time. Mm. And I think you've got to write that blog and you've, and you've got to do the Facebook thing, but you can't always do it like an ad. And I would, I'd say most of the time you can't do it like an ad. Just post some great photos up. Just say, look, at this wonderful wedding, this is this great shot, um, and work that shot. You know, don't put it up there for the exit stein still there and this and that are still there, but, you know, mm-hmm. if you're a bit time poor and you want to work that shot a bit more, get it looking pretty good mm-hmm. and get it up there. Maybe later on when you work it even more, you can put it back up there, but, you know, often, uh, you know, if you've got an international award-winning shot on Facebook, it's probably going to be a bit hard to see it properly on Facebook anyway, mm-hmm. so... Um, we have um, we have our own blog, um, and we also are submitting a lot of lot more weddings to other blogs. Mm-hmm. Um, and how do you find that works here? Do you get a lot of traffic then coming back through to your? <coughs> we've had it backfire on us a couple of times because um, if we have given a wedding to a, a, a high profile wedding blog, we had one situation where the editor sent me an email. I said, "Look, we were going to feature this magazine, but you gave it to Polka Dot Bride." We're not going to run it. And she said, you know, I've had brides sort of say, I've seen that wedding before. And I kind of came back to her and I said, yeah, they've seen that wedding before. Because when you put your annual out, you regurgitate weddings. I said, like, let's be fair here. I said, that was on a blog that's out for a day. 
And she said, well, it was inconvenient for you because it was the day I was deciding on the magazine layout and your wedding's out. And now what had happened, we had actually, when we finished our second album plan, we give the bride um, uh, screen reads of all the images for her to Facebook and promote, and she'd send it to the blog. We didn't know. So, you know, you can't have your weddings published everywhere. You've got to really respect that these are magazines. They're all competitive people, and you need to know the rules of the game before you start bending them because you can bend the rules a little yeah. but you've got to work in with people but yeah we've directly had weddings from being on blogs we've directly had wedding bookings from being in certain magazines we get spikes um, on our web hits when certain magazines come out yeah. I mean you know the Australian industry is probably similar to your industry you know we have wedding season now our, our kind of wedding season is like uh, September to the end of May. So June, July, August. May, June, July, August are pretty quiet. It's winter. I mean, what we're trying to do, I I think as wedding photographers, um, the Melbourne guys had a great thing. They got together. I think Jerry Gionis was really pushing for it. And they all got together and they started to retrain the way they'd hold the receptions in Melbourne. So now in Melbourne... In the first hour, they do the bridal waltz and cut the cake. Yeah. So the photographer goes home at seven yeah. rather than stay until ten. And yeah. it's, it's so strange that you, you can say change that. the world. Yeah. yeah, and it's just having the the gumption to actually go and speak to uh, your bride or the venue, or whoever the planner is, um, if there is one, you know, before the event or at the event, you know, and if things can be moved about a little bit, just so that they can enjoy themselves, you're not taking them away from their guests you know, or interrupting the day's activities. Yep. Things can be changed, things can be staged. Cake cutting, yep. we always stage that because at the end of the day, it's going to be done pretty much in the evening and a lot of people <coughs> will be, Probably. you know, high as a kite on whatever, Red you know. Wine, and flying around yeah. all over the place. Yeah, yeah so it's... It and sometimes it's better, yeah, to shoot, shoot the little setup ones even yeah. if you're there for the real ones. But, I mean, it's just an amazing thing that, that as a group of photographers, we can... You know, change things and protect the industry and make it better. I'm, I've been trying to push. One sort of thing I think is is if you, I mentioned the kind of thing before is you know if you if you, when I first started doing the weddings, I was just keen to get wedding bookings, and I was going and I was trying to get everyone to book me. You know, I was trying to get this reception place and that reception place. Nowadays, we focus on the reception places that we really like, um, that we find photograph the best. Uh, that we find are good to us mm-hmm. as crew, yeah. um, and the and and the ones the, the type of bride that we that we want, and we have affiliated ourselves with those people. Yeah. Doesn't happen overnight, but you know, slowly, slowly goes the monkey or whatever they say. Um, <laughs> but you know, we've built up those relationships. So you know, I think the whole thing is, you know, I've been shooting for. Um, nearly a good 30 to 40 years now since I, you know, I got my first camera when I was 14. Um, my PR age is 46, by the way. But, um, <laughs> but um, and it's staying that way. But, but So, you know, we've always had a, a long-term strategy and it's incredible that people that you've known for years and years that have sent you business. And we've got clients that have sent us hundreds of thousand dollars worth of business over the years because mm-hmm. every year they send us, you know, Three or four weddings, yeah. and that three or four weddings was, you know, twenty to forty k or whatever, mm-hmm. and you know, and they come in consistently. So, so it's that whole thing in building the industry. If you are a good person and 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 a smart person and build good relationships and look after people, people will look after you. We had a couple in recently from Dubai. They booked us online. They got recommended by another supplier by a florist which is unusual because Florist is more further down the pecking order type thing. Yeah. When they came to town, they went and saw all their suppliers and by the time I'd met them, they were raving. They said, five people have spoken so highly of you. We are so thrilled to have you as our wedding photographer. I mean, how good is that? Yeah, it's amazing. You it's can't straight buy away, that. yeah, you, you can't buy that. No. But you can build that by yeah. looking after suppliers, sending them a lot of images. And I mean, you know, when you think about it, when every time you do a wedding, there's 200 potential people. So if you do a wedding of 200 people, that's 200 potential new clients that you've got. And if you're fortunate enough to be in the swing when, you know, that bride and groom are 
are the young ones in their group or the early ones in their group getting married. And then it's like, you know, people tend to go in cycles. I remember um, interviewing and, and, and hanging out with this um, street photographer and he did some really hardcore work. And I saw him one day and I said, oh, how's it going, mate? He said, oh, I've gone to a lot of funerals lately. I said, oh, right. And he said, well, you know, I was doing a lot of stories on the drug addicts. And I said, oh, yeah. He said, oh, they're all dying. <coughs> and I said, he said, well, I'm just getting a bit of a run of deaths. He said, you know, like, you get some people and they all get together and they get married and they have a lot of babies. Well, when you're <laughs> photographing heroin addicts, they're all dying. And I've got a run of that. And, you know, if you, you, can, you, can, you know, and if you took that into the wedding strategy, you, you can get things where that couple are getting married, then all their friends are, they'll recommend you. Yeah, and then it's the whole baby thing. And it's yeah. that easy, but yeah. it's that hard. Yeah, mm. yeah. But it's, I mean, it is hard as well. You've got to do a good job. You've got to prove that you've got to you put are, the effort in. Yeah, that, that yeah. the creativity is there and that you are worth that investment. Yes, yeah. it's hard work. You've got to constantly be out there building yep. relationships. But like It pays say, off. It, it does pays pay off. off. Because in that particular <coughs> case, the, the clients were almost ready to sign us in and walked in through the door because all your little contacts had done all the oh, sales yeah, work yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah. I really think there's, there's, there's so much to do if... Um, so listening to Bambi Cantrell talk, I mean, I, I got a lot out of just sitting there and having coffees with her over the lovely couple of days. She's just incredible and so sharing and yeah. so smart. Yeah, she is. And a bloody good photographer yeah. and a bloody good, you know, a, a really, you know, a lot of respect. Um, as Ali G would say, respect. Um, <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. Shit. Bambi. Yeah. Um, no, dropped it. Gone. Never yeah. mind. Um, so... So in about the next five years, where do you think see the wedding industry going? How do you think it's going to be for photographers? Um, well, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. Like, lately, I've been thinking that, you know, 10 years ago, lately I had this thought that 10 years ago that, you know, amateur photographers were way down here at the bottom and professional photographers were way up here high. And now those amateurs with digital and the way they shoot with digital and the way they can look in the back of the camera and go, I better try again... And the way they're embracing photography and the way everyone's getting so image and media savvy, those amateurs have really come up high. I mean, and it's, it's, you know, you're at a wedding and three of the guests have got 5D Mark II, so there's probably going to be a lot more of that. You know, there's a lot of prosumers out there. So I think you know, what I want to be doing in the next five years is doing better customer care, really working on my networking a lot more. I already work with... Um, the best wedding stylists in Sydney, and there's a few others out there that I want to connect with. Yeah. And it takes a while yeah. to build those relationships, but I'm going to work on that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to really work on the top end of town. Um, and you can do that by walking into the high brand expensive shops and looking at how they're set out and looking at how they treat you. Mm. And if you walk in there that that you look like a $2 client, you won't get treated as well as if you look like you're a, you know, a $100 client. Mm. I mean, people do judge a book by its cover. Mm -hmm. Just as when, a, you know, if a, a wedding couple came to see you and you didn't really make an effort to dress well or get that bacon and egg stain off your shirt. <laughs> um, you, you know, like, mm. treat people as you want to be treated. But, but you can, you know, you can kind of trick it a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to spend a fair bit more time. I mean, every time I buy something in a shop now, I try and look at the way they've laid the shop out and the way they've welcomed me to the shop and the way they responded to me. And, and particularly when you go into some of the higher-end places, not photographers, but just where the clients I, I want to book me go, you think, ah, oh, this, is, this, is, this is what an amazing experience here. And... And he summed it up so well with the pink marketing. Do, do. You can go into Kmart and buy a ten dollar t shirt, or you can go down to I don't even know if Hugo Boss does black t shirts and spend four hundred bucks. It is actually a better t shirt. Mm -hmm. It will last longer. But it's four hundred times the price. Yeah. But it's the experience. Yeah. And it's the perception of the value and yep. how that's going to make you feel. It's that emotional and psychological connection that people are having with you as, as yep. the photographer. And a lot of people say, oh, well, clients won't spend that kind of money. Well, guess what? They do and they will because they can. Yeah. And we've done, some, we've done weddings with three dress changes. 
You know, she had two Alex Perrys and a Stephen Khalil. I mean, the dresses alone, it's 50K. I mean, they were just very wealthy people. Money wasn't an object. Yeah. And I mean, we got a really good wedding sale out of them. But if I didn't have the products to present to that client, and I actually find that with a few clients, uh, a colleague of mine, um, he, uh, I've really networked with some really good suppliers. So instead of me recommending lots of the same supplier, there's only one cinema photographer I recommend yeah. and that in Australia, and that's Untitled Films. And I'll recommend him, and then that you know he'll start raving about me. So it's sort of like if they haven't booked me and they're looking for videos, I go, you've got to check this guy out. He's expensive. He's amazing. Look at his work here. Da 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 da. So I'm helping them as a friend. I'm helping them yeah. look at other suppliers. Now I'm aware that he's very expensive, and I'm aware that if they spend money on him, it's going to cut into my budget, my photography budget. But if they're already going to get a video, a good video guy, they might as well get the better one, yeah. and he'll send them back to me. So there's this whole tag team thing happening. So it's that whole thing, you know, of, of working in with really good other suppliers i've had a lot of photographers recommend me yeah well that's i mean that's great for weddings you know because they don't they're not wedding photographers but they knew about me and they knew about me in the industry and their friends were getting married or this art director's getting married yeah and you just get everyone talking about you just quickly as a going aside from that as a a little sort of tip for up-and-coming photographers out there we we were just saying that how the amateur market is sort of catching up the professional market mainly because of the advance in technology with the cameras and that so yep. you know pretty much any photographer out there can get a reasonable exposure now just by pff, taking yeah. a shot so yeah. I suppose what to gather from that is to not worry so much about what's happening in the camera now is to develop that creative eye isn't it definitely yeah, yeah that's yeah. what's going to set you apart from everybody <coughs> else, you know angles lights everybody can take a photo mm. they always could I mean now the mystique is is gone in cameras I mean I couldn't believe it that People used to think cameras were complicated. I mean, all you have to do is just get the, the two lines matched up and click and there's a reasonable exposure. You know? Yeah. It was pretty easy. Yeah. I mean, I actually think cameras are a lot more complicated these days. Um, yeah, but it's not the camera. I mean, you know, when you've got... Um, you know, if you put me and Nigel Mansell on a, on a, on a uh, country road and you gave me the Ferrari and him a clapped-out Toyota... <laughs> You'd have a go, would you, Graham? He will still build and beat me yeah. because he is better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Like if it was just a straight, I'd beat him. Yeah. If I could start the car and hold it, but but <laughs> but you know, um, it's not the equipment that maketh the man. But the, you know, good photographers have good gear. But it it, it is really developing your style and that eye. Yeah. Um, I mean, but good business people will always do well in business. And if you know, you've got good business skills as a photographer you'll do well. You know, the best photographer, the highest award-winning photographer, they won't book a lot of weddings unless they can market themselves and, and price their work to make a good profit. Yeah. Um, there's heaps of photographers I know waiting for the phone to ring. Yeah. And there's lesser ones out there getting plenty of work. Yeah. It's, you know... So if there was a style of photography that you've not tried yet, is there anything in particular that you would like to have a, a dabble with? Um, keep it clean right? no not really um, I mean I did do a, 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 probably the most fun I ever had with photography was um, with Cheryl she was this stripper from no, I'm joking um, uh, was I used to do a lot of like action stories and we used to rig a lot of cameras on cars and you know on kayaks and, 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 and we used to shoot a lot of stuff so it was like you were in there doing it um, so I mean, I always carry a camera with me. I, I suppose, I mean, I really do like, I love just wandering around the street and taking photos. Um, and I think, I sometimes realise, I'm not really answering your question, sorry, but when I'm shooting a wedding, that I should try and go into that place and just wander around the wedding and take photos. Yeah. You know, and, and try not to be, you not really that obsessed, but you know to try and be a bit chilled at the wedding and have fun yeah. and it, you're working hard but I think it's important to sometimes um, you know I really push my photographers and say you've just got to stay on it yeah. you know and keep watching and I mean, if you're seeing something good unfolding in front of you and you're looking at it you've missed it yeah. you've got to 
have the camera there and even when you've said goodbye to everybody I'll still have the camera it'll still have a card in it and it'll still have frames on it and I'm walking out the door and then you look in back in the reception you see something so I, I always say you're just always on um, it's very much the case that we've sort of seen on the workshop as well when we've set some of the models up and at the end of the pose we suddenly said okay you can get up now you can move now that can often be the time oh, to get a great shot yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're yeah. getting up or you know something a funny expression something, on the face yeah. Yeah. that's the moment that will beat the picture yeah. that you've just taken and yeah. spent half an hour setting up yeah because often and, and it, you know with wedding clients they're not models they're, they're real people and um <coughs> and even if somebody's quite laid back, they will generally have like a photo face on. So often if I'm the first photographer, like the main shooter at a wedding, like I'm the wedding photographer, my other photographer, the second photographer, he's more just being a photographer. And I think what I need to do is go back to that place a lot more and stop being just the wedding photographer and try and shoot it a bit looser and a bit more chill. I think it's really important to shoot a wedding and do how you do it rather than always shoot for how you think the client wants it. Mm -hmm. I will listen to the client's brief yeah. and I will definitely show them really respect and say, look, you've given me this shot list, I've agreed to do it, and I'll do it. You know, otherwise you shouldn't take the wedding on mm -hmm. or you should say no from the start. I don't do that. We discussed that thing the other day when we were having a drink together yeah. about, that, about as a photographer really you want to be shooting and it sounds very selfish, this, but the logic's there that you want to shoot a wedding how you want to shoot it, yep. not how the bride and groom want to shoot it. But Definitely. Inevitably, they've hired you because they like the way that you shoot. Exactly. So, exactly. You know, yeah. Days, and, I, and I think it's good to have good people around you, and this is why it's good to enter awards. But, you know, like the, the, the sometimes you can get these amazing award winners who do not run good businesses because they're spending you know so much if they spend as much time on their award work as looking after their c customers mm -hmm. they do better business yeah but i have won awards and i've used those awards in my marketing and i've really used them to you know to the benefit and um but i've never rested on those laurels you know and and um yeah it, it, i think it's it's a matter of really having a lot of fun and and um and keeping an open mind that's a really good time, actually, because obviously we're here because we won an award last year with the MPA. Yeah. And um, so, in sort of that vein, what do you think is the importance of people, photographers joining associations like the MPA, WPPI? I think it's. I think it's great. I think yeah. you know, it's it's like sometimes I go out and 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 do things, and I think, oh my god, I should just get out more. There's just so much out there. Mm -hmm. Even the guy today having the coffee. The guy was on the dance floor last night. I mean. He's just amazing. He's got like about five different lives happening. Um, but he just said, there's just so much to do in the world, yeah. you know? And the thing is, you know, if you like, if you get active, I mean, I'm coming, I really am going to try hard to, it's not that I'm going to do it, I am, I'm doing it, you know? I'm going to start getting fit again. Yeah. Um, because it, the more fitter you are, the more active you be, it's just so much better and easier in your life to get out there and, 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 and do stuff. I mean, I find I'm doing these weddings these days, they're nailing me. I'm like bugger. <laughs> but, you know, if I was fitter, I'd make yeah. a quicker recovery. So maybe, you know, so I find I you know, have a few glasses of Coke just to try and, like, get that jolt. But I'm thinking, oh, shit, maybe, you know, if I just had more bottles of water and more fruit. I mean, there's so many good little simple things you can do to... You know, like you're saying before, it's not just a matter of being a better photographer. It's if you're a better person yeah. and healthier person, you're just going to have a, you know, it's you're going to have a better life. Yeah. And you can achieve a lot. Sorry to answer your question. I, I, no, I no, keep no. waffling. I do apologise. No. I think it's crucial to join photography associations. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, I joined the ARPP and I, and I was kicking myself because I... Once I got into it and realised how good it was mm -hmm. and how beneficial it was for my business and what a cheap bloody investment it was compared to what I got out of it. Mm. And I think they're great. I wish I'd joined 20 years ago. Yeah, it's, it's a real support network yep. as well, isn't it? And mm. they are the voice of the industry invariably. And yep. if you have a problem, they are the people that will help you go and guide you through any issues that you might have or any questions that you might yeah. have. At the industry, so I mean, I think organisations like um, yours in, in uh, Australia and, and the MPA in, in the UK, you know, they are crucial, I think, to photographers. 
Definitely, definitely. Uh, um, and, you know, and, and entering awards is, is great. I mean, I, we used to uh, have this um, series of uh, commercial awards in Australia and a few of the photographers entered and they bombed and they never entered again. And I went, that's just like, that's absurd. Yeah. I mean, you know, I know some of these people, they've crashed a car three times. I said, you never quit driving. <laughs> like, you got a parking ticket yesterday, you're never going to park your car again. Like, get real. Yeah. And, you know, like you get knocked, you know, you get knocked down. The thing is just to get back up and come back. And generally you find the people who get knocked back learn and move forward and get better. Yeah. And you've just got to keep trying. Yeah. Well, it's a Bambi even said actually she'd entered something for a competition and she'd been marked really lowly at low and it wasn't that long ago either and she said I had a moment but I picked myself up and I just moved on. You've got to, haven't you? Definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mean, I, I look at the Australian Institute of Professional Photography and like people, like people spend so long working on those award shots. Mm. And when you think, I mean, Sue, <coughs> Sue Bryce, she won Portrait Photographer of the Year. Now, in the previous year, she would have won. But this year, there was some pretty, uh, there was a totally different variety and palette of work that was, was up there in, in the winning bodies, in the winning categories. But Sue won Portrait Photographer of the Year. And she had four images there. And each image, she'd spent about 20 hours of work on. No, okay, that's 80 hours all up. Now, that's a lot of time. However... That's a two-week investment, let's say. Mm -hmm. Now, the rewards she can now reap from marketing that and marketing it correctly are tenfold. Yeah. The skills that she improved in herself in being a, a better photoshopper and being conceptive, the, the reward to her ego, the pat on the back from her peers, um, the, you know, she's now doing this road trip in WPPI. I mean, you can make these things really work for you. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is to not drop your game and forget um, what's happening back home the, the rest yeah. of the business you, you know yeah. that that's important you can't put that to the side you've got to add in prepping for the award shot I mean I'd love to get back up there and win some awards because I haven't won any for a while um, you know my work is not heavily photoshopped but I'm not it, the, the, the bottom line is I don't have the shots I'm not putting the effort in I can't blame anybody else you know, so, um, I can't believe that because I think your imagery is amazing. So, thanks. You know, I'll buy you a beer. Um, <laughs> but money but, um, across the table there. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. for me, the main thing that I want to do at a wedding is that my client will be happy. Yeah. yeah. Yes, of course, I want to be really happy with the work, and if I work hard, but you know, I make mistakes. But you know, that's my main thing: is the client's happy, and then if I'm happy. Um, if we can uh, then pull that wedding out and submit it and get it published in a wedding magazine, uh, if it's good enough and diverse enough that we want to add it to our website, um, if it's good enough and diverse enough that we might, um, you know, feature it in our blog, our own blog, um, if it's good enough that we could pull a wall print off it to put in the studio, if it's good enough that we could use it for an ad. Mm. And if it's good enough that we could enter it in an award. Mm. I mean, there's, I think there was eight things I spoke of yeah. then. We just do not pull that for, out of every wedding. I'd be yeah. totally I'm not bullshitting saying. you there if I said. But, yeah. but, but you, you know, if we could pull out two or three of them each wedding, yeah. but we try for eight. You've got, I mean, you have got to be focused on that as well. It's not just about, you know, uh, doing that wedding on that day. It's all the preparation that goes into it. And it's actually thinking about the business angle at the end of it yeah, as well. Yeah. You have to be in that frame of mind. <coughs> you know, and there's, there's quite a lot of people that don't do that and they don't think about that. You know? I think a lot of people, um, I really think there's a really bad side to photographers where they can be bitter little people. <laughs> um, and they should just lighten up and they should open their minds and they should, you know, if you don't like something, that's fine. Keep your mouth shut. Um, you know, if you're a negative person, then you're going to be negative and negative shit's coming your way. But yeah. if, you know, if you actually, you know, it's like Beckstead, he's like a hippie. But it's kind of true. If you yeah. are open-minded and you are positive, good stuff comes out. I mean, I was surprised how well he, he judged, but he doesn't enter photos. No. It's not his thing, but yet he'd probably win lots of awards. But um, that was that was interesting. But um, yeah, it, it's 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 just uh, I think 
you know, a, a good positive attitude, um, working hard, being proactive, entering awards. Um, and even when you said, you touched on something before about personal development, I mean, you know, you can, you know, some photographers are really quite shy and this and that, but the more you get out there and expose yourself, the less shy you'll become. And you can go and do courses yeah. to, you know, assist you in being, being a better communicator. Yeah. You know, you need to look outside the square. Like all your problems aren't going to be solved in the photography world. But, you know, and, you, know you could be the next big thing that, 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 that comes in, you know, on a totally new tangent. I mean, and sometimes the people, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you can't do that. You know, I mean, somebody said in Greece, um, oh, that was, that was great. Somebody said to Bambi, oh, they don't do boudoir in Greece. I mean, that's bullshit. I know. Well, who says they do You know, they've got all these fantastic lingerie shops here, yeah. you know, like somebody's wearing that stuff. Yeah. Mm. And great looking girls as well. Oh, just oh, women here are <laughs> real. That's a whole other story, guys. Yeah. Well, I think we've got a fabulous amount of information off you there, Graham. Um, and all sort of serious business stuff near the end. Is there any funny little tale? That you'd like to share with us oh, just a bit of a smile on the guy so to put you on the spot here but the grand sort of guy the funny things happen to aren't oh they? yeah i met this um <laughs> i met this greek guy this morning down at the water and um and i said oh you know how you going i'm graham i'm over from sydney at this wedding convention up in the hotel there. and he went oh i'm con i said oh, are you like you know in the movies are you um con the fisherman he said no no i catch a lot of fish but they don't call me con the fisherman I said, oh, what do they call you? And he said, well, you know, I, I build the boats. They don't call me Con the Boat Builder. And he said, I paint the house. They don't call me Con the House Painter. I said, what do they call you? He goes, oh, you know, you have sex with one goat. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Graham, the new um, DVD you've got out, how can people sort of get oh, in contact um, with you to get a copy of that? Yeah, what? jump on my website and, yeah. and we'll have that in the, under the ph photography workshop section. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And we can get those perhaps shipped out to the UK, or we can do it for definitely. Us, can't we? Yep. Yeah. Um, more than yeah. happy to help you out with that. So Fantastic. Yeah. So the website address to is www.gmphotographics.com.au. That's brilliant. So let's hope you're going to come over to the UK soon, Graham. I'm sure the photographers over there would lap you up. Okay. It's Thanks it's very much, it, Greg and Mary. It, it yeah. would be a great workshop, honestly, guys. <laughs> okay. And if you haven't seen Graham's work, you need to get on to his website and check him out. He's brilliant. Yeah. Okay, Thank folks, you, yeah, that's uh, the Raw Files coming to you from Corfu, and we'll catch up with you very soon. Bye, Mum. <laughs> <laughs>